Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today, continuing Shark Month, we are doing Deep Blue Sea 2, which came out in 2018 and is a sequel to a classic we have covered before. It was only 2018? Isn't that crazy? That's what IMDb I it came says. out earlier. I know, right? Because Deep Blue Sea 3 didn't come out that long ago. Really? That's what IMDb said. Okay, IMDb might be wrong. I didn't look it up. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe the... Yeah, it didn't sound right to me either, but I'm like, it's IMDb. <laughs> like, they're never wrong. So, we'll... we'll uh, it's whatever. <laughs> but if anyone can verify the actual year, then that would be great. But before we get into the review, <laughs> let's grab our cups and talk about tea. Yes, so we are both using our Horror Movie Tea merch mugs. The Please Don't Kill Me and I'm Going to Kill You at Some Point mugs. Our twin mugs. Links down below. And we are also both drinking our affiliate teas, Plum Deluxe, Reading Nook Blend Black Tea. Our it favorite. is our favorite from Plum Deluxe. <laughs> And it's got black tea, rosebuds, lavender, chamomile, and natural flavor. And this one does have caffeine, but I think this is one of the ones on their site that you can choose yes. whether it has caffeine or no caffeine, which you don't really find that anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Usually with a certain flavor, unless it's just straight up like Lipton black tea or something like that. It either has caffeine or it doesn't. And there's so it's, no choice. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice to have that option because the flavor is amazing. But sometimes you just don't want the caffeine. And yeah. other mornings like today, we need caffeine. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> wish they had more teas that had the, the decaf versus mm -hmm. caffeinated option. But, but there are multiple on the site that give the option. Yes, and as far as I know, it's the only website that actually allows yeah. you that flexibility it's so. really nice so we appreciate it and this is definitely our favorite so far from plum to Lux. yeah it's been a long-standing favorite for a yes. while now even before <laughs> they were our affiliate yes but we do want to shout out plum deluxe and thank them for letting us to continue to do what we love words and for fueling our addiction thank you <laughs> yes um and for our uh, horror movie tea sippers out there. Brew yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the review. It's hard for me to talk because my tongue... But anyways, my tongue is still like... It just sounds wrong without any context, but let's continue to the summary. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I have a canker sore, y'all. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, for the summary. A pharmaceutical billionaire is funding a top secret project using genetically modified sharks. And lo and behold, surprise, surprise, the sharks get smart enough that they're like, we want revenge. And so they're like trying to take down the facility and also like wreak revenge on the, the, the evil humans. But yeah, it, it, if it sounds familiar, it's because... It's practically the same story as the first movie. But we will get into that in the entertainment scale. So for entertainment, I would rate this... It's like, I love shark movies. So I, I'm probably rating this higher than it deserves. But I would rate this a 6.5. It is far inferior to the first movie. The first movie, though a classic, isn't the best shark movie but it is a very unique story and you don't I, I feel like a lot of movies nowadays kind of steals the idea like a lot of the things that the sharks do in the original Deep Blue Sea they have sharks do in a regular shark movies which is funny because it's like 
sharks don't actually act like that, but they're like, oh, Deep Blue Sea did it, and we have no reason for it, so we're just going to make them like that. But anyways, it, it, it obviously, just like Jaws, had some influence on the, the culture of the, the shark movies that are produced nowadays. And it had memorable characters. Like, you, like I can still remember each character fairly vividly, especially like the chef or the the Samuel Jackson character, like all of them have varying personalities. And it it's like they literally copied and pasted, but they did it way worse. Like the the effects are terrible. The characters aren't nearly as memorable and yeah. they're a lot more annoying. It's like a discount deep blue sea. <laughs> yes. It's like a and honestly, I was getting sci-fi original vibes a like the bit. entire time. A little bit. And like the um especially es- with the babies. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like the effects like the in the original Deep Blue Sea, they use practical effects. And the sharks there look great. The only complaint is they don't look like bull sharks. Yeah. But what's funny is in this movie, the effects are way more terrible, but they actually look more like a bull shark. It just is funny. Except for the babies. The babies don't look The bad. babies were awful. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, it, it plays like a bad original sci-fi movie. And then the, yeah, the CG is absolutely terrible, especially for it being a... F- not like a super recent, but a fairly recent movie. It brings nothing new to the table as far as the first movie goes. It's like, it's everything that the first movie was, but done way more terrible. It's like, the only reason why you should have a sequel is if you're adding to the first film. And it it just does nothing. If anything, it makes you miss that you're not watching the first film. Yeah. Now, to its credit, it does have... Varied kills. It's not just like constantly like they they, they kind of change up how the characters die. It's not the same thing over and over. But it's just this movie didn't need to exist. And it, it's like while just wait till we get to Deep Blue Sea three. <laughs> yeah, next year. <laughs> but like and and like the baby sharks is just so dumb. Like. That that definitely made it feel like a sci-fi original yes. having these like baby piranha looking yeah. sharks constantly and and then the fact that you could like hear them coming and you just see a bunch of bubbles it just oh. it was unnecessary yeah like I would only recommend watching this movie if you if you have a good group of friends and you want to laugh at it. That's the only thing that would justify the the meager amount of entertainment that you will get from yeah. the movie. But besides that, yeah, I I probably will not watch this movie again. Like the baby sharks are funny, but they only are funny for so long, and then you're like, okay, this is stupid. Yeah, I give this one a five point five. Like it's it's all right. We again we've seen worse. A lot worse, even recently. (laughs) But we've also seen better. The premise itself really is just a carbon copy of Deep Blue Sea, just made more ridiculous. And the effects were alright. Again, we've seen worse, but we've also seen a heck of a lot better. The babies were awful and unnecessary. If they did have a baby shark, they should have just had one. And had it bigger than the babies that they had in there. Because that was completely unrealistic. But smaller than the adults, obviously. Just have, like, a juvenile shark that's going around through the hallways. Kind of like they did in the original Deep Blue Sea with the adult-sized sharks that got in. Like, and have them kill the, the people that way. Yeah, but it's like, then you're you're just repeating the same thing. A little bit. And they even yeah. repeated some of the kills. Yeah, but if they made them even smarter than the original Deep Blue Sea, then they could have played it a different way using that. Yeah, like almost like herded them. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess in a way they kind of did that in the first movie. A little bit. But it bit. wasn't like quite as obvious. Yeah. It, it wasn't until like towards the end and they're like, oh. Yeah. 
So they, they could have done it a couple of different ways and made it a lot better. The characters were a little flat, especially compared to the original. The interactions were all right and fairly believable between the characters themselves, but it was it's just a little lackluster. It's just disappointing. And it really does make you wish you were just watching the original instead. There are a couple of deaths that were interesting and kind of a, a nod to the original, like the guy standing over the wave pool saying the sharks can kiss my ass and then he gets his head bitten off, literally, by a shark. That was kind of funny. A little predictable, but a decent nod to the original when Samuel L. Jackson got eaten. So that was all right. Also, when they help the the married guy up, the married doctor guy up, and it's just half of him and the other, you know, viscera and, and bits kind of fall back into the the pipe area that they had climb, or climbed out of. That was interesting. I, but it's like, I, I kind of knew he was already dead. Yeah, you could kind of tell, but it was kind of interesting the way they did it. Yeah. The yeah. effects fell a little short there. You could tell a lot of it was CG and not the greatest CG. Yeah. But it wasn't horrible either. There were a couple of characters that you're like, please just die already. Especially the main billionaire guy. Yeah, and it, it's funny how like... Before it was like the main like doctor chick that was like the person that you kind of like hated, and but it's like he he was ma- mainly funding the project. He wasn't actually doing the experiments. Is that no? But he was using the product. Yeah, it hadn't yeah. been tested or anything. Like he was doing human trials when there really shouldn't have been human trials going yeah. on at all. <laughs> yeah, which. Anyways, I'll get on that later. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, I mean, I guess it's his facility and that's his prerogative, but... I feel like that'd be highly illegal. It's a bad idea. Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah. But that's probably why it was done in international waters, (laughs) where no one else was really watching. (laughs) Yeah. But I could see that happening. I just, I don't know. It was just a little weird and kind of dumb. And he Mm -hmm. was... Jerk. Not very likable. There's so much in the realism scale that just (laughs) makes the entertainment scale take a hit, as usual, but it's just... mm. (laughs) It is one of those dumb movies that, you know, you you will enjoy it for the fact that it's just dumb fun, but if you're looking for, like, tension or or anything like the first movie, then it's just going to be bad. But it's like, of course... Like who who would watch the the sequel that wasn't a fan of the the first one, you know? Yeah. It's just like you watch it with a certain expectation and they just did not do that at all. Like all of the tense moments just didn't feel tense. It's yeah, it's not the same. It doesn't have near the same feel and it just falls really short of the original. So if you're going to watch any of the ones in the series, it's definitely the original that you should grab. It's it's an okay movie, this yeah. one. But it's you're going to be disappointed if you're going to compare it to the original for sure. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and move to the, the realism because that's mostly what I had an issue with and kept writing down. Okay. All the things. Yeah, that, that same for me too. Though it was just so unrealistic and bad. I am going to give this a 1.5. And the reason being, the at least the, the sharks this time actually looked more like bull sharks. And really the, the main thing that carries the realism skill is the fact that I could probably see something like this happening... Though, like, like 20 years ago, I would be like, oh, yeah, th- this is something that totally could happen. But nowadays, since animal testing is looking, uh, is being looked down upon more and more, and we're trying to find alternative technologies that allow us to, to test, you know, new and upcoming medications and things like that, it's like, I feel like we are 
coming pretty close to a point in time where animal testing is going to be extinct because we literally don't need it. We have so many other more reliable methods that will bring us better results and more accurate results. Well, even if it doesn't necessarily go extinct, because I think... They will likely do some kind of testing still on with certain things, but they'd more likely use like mice or rats. Yeah, what I mean, they, not a shark. Yeah, it's like sharks are so different. Like, what's crazy is our genetics com- to like a rat and a mouse are pretty dang close compared to a shark. One of the reasons why animal testing is kind of transitioning we're trying to transition out of it is the fact that even though mice and rats are both mammals they they will react completely to uh, di- completely different like there's i forgot what medication it was but they're doing trial for a medication it worked perfectly on the mice and rats and then whenever they move to human trials it it killed someone Mm -hmm. and that was the complete opposite of what they were seeing with the mice and rat like our bodies are different enough that it's not completely accurate i'm honestly surprised they don't do more testing with pigs Mm -hmm. like move from mice and rats to pigs because their physiology is actually the closest to ours it's probably because of size because that's Possibly. because it's like you can have a, mm-hmm. a lot more rats and mice in yeah, the facility versus like pigs or monkeys. But especially when they're they're attempting to do like organ donations from pigs, like modified pigs, if they're going to start doing that route, then they could easily also try out different drugs and things on pigs. Again, nowhere near the same as a shark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The point <laughs> the point is is for them to specifically use sharks like animal testing that we have aside next to nothing in common with. Yeah, the fact that they're using <laughs> specifically sharks seems kind of crazy. A little bit. <laughs> and even if it's top secret, any scientist or doctor that would be brought this experiment, they'd probably be like you're you're crazy. This is not going to work. Like even if there's positive results in the sharks. That doesn't mean anything for the for the humans. And plus, like, it's, I don't know. I still, with both the previous movie and this one, I don't understand why they had to make the sharks more intelligent. Like, yeah, it just doesn't. They were trying to use antibodies that the shark creates in its brains that target certain things. Yeah. But why weren't they just extracting those things and using them in cultures and stuff? Why did they have to enhance the sharks? Yeah, it just seems like a long shot. There was shot. no reason for it. <laughs> yeah. But the the other things, though, kind of going back through the, the staple points of the mm-hmm. movie. So going to the very beginning of the movie where it's the fishermen, the, I get are they called shark finners? Anyways, just they, fishermen. Yeah, the fishermen. Whenever they get attacked, it's. I don't know if this hit you weird, but to me, it felt a little bit too perfect and weird that all of the guy's limbs were missing and yes. nothing was taken from the torso. It's yes. like I'm sorry, our torso is literally the biggest yeah. part of our body. It just seems, and the meatiest, it just I could seems, understand the limbs missing, but there would have been at least one bite on the torso. Exactly. Like, maybe them trying to get to the torso, if the person's thrashing, then yes, they're going to be losing a limb. But the, just them being like, okay, we're done, and the guy's, like, floating away with no limb. Like, no. Well, and the sound effects that they used almost sounded like slicing. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. Just, yeah. They did not pick the right sound effects for this movie at all (laughs) yeah but we'll we'll yeah you'll cover that later Mm -hmm. and then whenever the pharmaceutical billionaire guy is trying to prove how smart and great and well-trained these sharks are he like pushes someone in the water it's a stupid like tension scene the tech guy yes the The one that keeps the whole facility running yeah (laughs) 
But the, the, the one thing that's crazy to me is in facilities like this, even if best case scenario, these animals are trained, they would still have some sort of ramp or um, some sort of guardrail to prevent people from falling in the water. It just is it's like, I know the guy is crazy, but it just it's, it's just baffling to me yeah. that they wouldn't have some sort of extra safety measure. Well, especially considering the only time we see the device that deters the sharks is around the like the trainer guy. Yes. He's the only one that we see use that device ever. So if he's not around and someone falls in that tank area, they're screwed. And talking about the trainer guy with the the remote or whatever, Mm -hmm. like... What if it runs out of batteries? Well, that and it also (laughs) seems... It just... It's it's crazy because it's like, well, if he had the remote... I say like, I don't I don't think he had it on him when they're in the facility, but it's like if he did, wouldn't that be a huge plot hole where he could just be like beep beep and make the sharks go away? Yes. And then they, they can just safely get up out of the facility. Yes. It's just yeah, it's like where was the beep beep thing? Yes. <laughs> where was the remote? Yes. And it doesn't seem like I mean that thing was tiny, so it's like if it were me, I would keep it on me all the time. Whether that thing or not- would be attached. Yes. And so is this, that's a huge plot I hole. would be changing the batteries daily and it would be attached to me yeah. 24-7. Yeah, like that, a huge plot hole. It's like cool yes. idea and all, but it's like it, it didn't come into play at all nope. during the movie. Yeah. Except in the beginning. I could even see not all of them being able to go up to the surface with him because they only had the one device that helps you swim a little better. I forget what they call it. Um, but it's remember. just a, a small portable device. Yeah, it's that, like a propeller yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, so they only had one of those. So I can see, and they were pretty deep in the water. So not many people are going to be able to hold their breath that long to be able to swim to the surface with him, especially if they use that device. Now, if they had enough of those, because they had a couple of the the breathing, the small breathing tanks, if they had enough of those for all of them, then they could just, you know, swim normally up to the surface as calm as you can using that device to deter them. Yeah. Or at least a couple of them could have gone with him if they only had like two or three. But that's still more than they would have been able to do before. Yeah. It it was a really big plot hole. Yeah. But And I'm glad you brought that up because I was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> well let me I, I have a, a quite a bit on my list, so let me kinda wrap it up and sure. then you can go ham because I know you're gonna. Um yep. <laughs> Another thing, well, talking about the propeller, whenever the, the one guy is like, I'm going to go in, it's like the shark, like, kind of like, to me, it looked like that the shark just bumped him and then he, he just like, just like fell and floated in the water. It's like, I don't know. I mean, he was unconscious, but I'm like, what the hell? Like, the shark bumped him. Like, what did it, what caused him to become unconscious? Yeah. It just didn't make sense. If it had hit him in the head, that would make sense. Yeah. But it hit him in the body. Yeah. It just, it was. No. Yeah. He would have been winded for sure and yeah. a little stunned, but not knocked out like he was. Yeah. But, and then, of course, piranha shark babies. Yes. Not realistic whatsoever it was just hilarious yeah. and entertaining uh, honestly that was the most entertaining part it was of the movie hilarious to me. and entertaining at first yeah and then it's kind of like it got okay way ridiculous they really leaned on to those i think yes. it's because they use practical effects the majority of the time so maybe like save their budget a little bit i also want to know what they use because it's like it's like i wonder if they use like a bubble machine and then they just had a string and was like pulling it or or what they did also, Shark Roar, once again, uh-huh. all of these freaking movies Every having movie Shark Roar. Just, duh. And then at the very end when 
uh, Bella is trying to come up to them, them shooting her and then killing her, even if she she did actually die because she... She didn't? Well, yes, but they still, they alluded to the fact that she might be dead. Like, in the boat. I'm so, yeah. I know in the, at the end of the movie, we find out she's alive. Yeah. But at that, in that particular scene, they, they show that she might be dead. But the fact that she was using all of the power to swim up, and then they kill her, and suddenly she just stops and then flows down. It's like, I'm sorry, it's just like when you're driving in a car and you have to stop suddenly. It's just, you have that momentum and you will continue to go. So even if she died, because there's still that momentum, she would have kept going. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yeah, I, that actually yes. bothered me. I'm like, momentum is a physics? thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, of course, since it's in the water, I'm, since there's a lot more resistance, I'm sure she wouldn't go as far as if she were in a car or in the air. But still, there would still, she would if keep going for hurt. a bit. Yeah, exactly. She just like suddenly stopped. It was yeah, it didn't it didn't look right. And then the tech guy that gets attacked towards the end, and we think that he dies, but then he ends up coming up. There's a, a decently long scene between when he goes under and we and he comes up. And I'm sorry, it doesn't matter how long you can hold your breath for. I almost can guarantee you can't hold your breath for that long of time. It just yeah, no. So, yes, he might not have gotten eaten by the shark, but he probably would have drowned. <laughs> yeah, unless he came up in a different area and decided to swim under the water to that point. Which I guess he could have, but that sounds kind of dumb and out of character for him. Yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> and then my, my last bit is the character reactions. It... <laughs> You know, these types of movies have the the curse of being, like, super over the top and, like, people freaking out. And it's like, there there's a point where you cross from being realistic to being unrealistic. And this, it, it did have the sci-fi original movie vibes where, like, the acting, they're just, like, whenever the, the guy is in the shower... And the water's coming up and then the piranha sharks are coming and he's just screaming and then his other friends just like screaming back. It's just, I don't know, just a lot of the reactions just seemed a little bit too cheesy and over the top for what would What's sad happen. is that seems like a bit more of the realistic deaths. <laughs> that was one of the most realistic Sadly. Well, what's funny, yeah, what's funny but is... they, like, jump roped with that line between realistic and unrealistic. Yeah, they're just like, boop, boop, yep. boop, boop. But what's funny, I forgot the guy's name, but the, the one that was in the shower, yeah, I was I like, I at first that. I was like, okay, he should get on the bed, but he didn't. I don't know if he didn't think he had time or what, but whenever he got in the shower, I'm like, oh, okay, it's like... Not ideal, but if you can't get on the bed for whatever reason, that's the next best thing. And so it kind of sucks that even though he wasn't being completely dumb, he still... And I still don't understand how, like, the water was, like, then raising and going over. Because in the 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 room where the guy was on the bed, it didn't look like the water was really rising. So I don't... I don't know what yeah, happened there. They were inconsistent. Yeah. Just, so a lot of inconsistencies mm -hmm. with this movie. A lot of crazy weird stuff happening. And that's why, like, I'm actually kind of impressed I had so much for the realism. And so I'm a little bit nervous to see how much you have for yours. <laughs> the 1.5 is a good rating. That was mine as well. I'm very proud. I'm glad you approve. <laughs> I'm very proud. <laughs> I am surprised you didn't mention the extendable teeth that they showed the shark having in the beginning. What? Yes. I don't remember that. I had to back it up a couple of times and I replayed it over and over about five times. The teeth extended a little bit. Wow. It was almost, it was almost like toothless in How to Train Your Dragon. Like they were, you know, about this big and then they extended. Wow. They made like a sound effect with it and everything that it just did. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It was bad. It was really bad. 
That's great. And that's not how shark teeth do. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that's not a thing. They don't have extendable teeth. Um, I did like how in the beginning of the movie when she's giving her presentation, she did mention that that's the one shark she would not want to swim with because bull sharks do tend to be more aggressive and they do have a stronger bite than great whites. The caveat to that is like a bigger great white is by nature going to have a stronger bite because it's a bigger shark. That being said, pound for pound, the bull shark has a stronger bite. I actually looked it up. <laughs> Nerd. Because <laughs> she says a bull shark's bite is 10 times stronger. That's BS. Go figure. It's like just a tad bit over three times as strong for a shark of the same size. So but that's still impressive. Yeah, so if you do like an eight foot shark, bull shark, versus an eight foot great white, the bull shark is going to have a much stronger bite, but great whites get a lot bigger than bull sharks do. So I'm not entirely sure why they didn't use the the actual facts, which are just as interesting, I feel like, mm -hmm. instead of exaggerating it to ten times as strong as a great white spite. Yeah, no, it's a little over three, which is still extremely impressive. Yeah, it's like why it's like like that one guy that we watch where he does nature facts. It's like yeah. nature in real life can be just as like fascinating and exactly. grand as like fiction world. There are times when it can be even more intimidating if you use the actual legit facts than if you tried to make something up instead. So the nature's a pretty incredible thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let it be incredible. Um, <sighs> such inconsistencies. They also, I, I wish they had also mentioned that a lot of the bull sharks bites tend to happen at like the the coastal areas or like river mouths where water tends to be a bit more murky mm -hmm. when the sharks can't really see that well that tends to be where the issue happens because you know people give off a lot of the same splashy signals <laughs> as a fish in trouble yeah and if they can't tell <laughs> they they give a bite nom nom <laughs> is you food no it eh. <laughs> <laughs> But they're big animals, and a small bite can do a lot of damage. <laughs> it happens. I wish they had mentioned that, but it wouldn't have pertained to this movie anyway, I guess. I just found it a little odd, because they do tend to be coastal sharks. Coastal and river mouth sharks. And they were out in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. With five sharks. Like, you really only need one, maybe two, for your research at a time. So why they had five there? But that's like the previous movie, though. Were there five sharks or were there three? I think there were three or four. It was a smaller number. I think it was actually three. But it was still in the middle of the ocean. Yes, but they were a different kind of shark, I'm pretty sure, weren't they? They were bull sharks. Oh, they were too, yeah. Yeah, they were, that movie had the sin. They didn't look saying, like, yeah. yeah. the saying is bull sharks, but it looked <laughs> it like a look great white. Like, it looked like either a mako, like a really big mako shark... Or a small great white, like, with the pointed nose and everything. Yeah. It didn't look like a bull shark in the original. But, yeah, these, it just seemed a little off. And them hunting in a pack in, like, a goose formation, like a V. Goose. It just, yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought of. Like, the migration V kind of pattern of geese yeah. and ducks. Yeah. So it was just a little weird that they were swimming in formation like that. And they did mention that. Like, that's unusual for them. And they tried to attribute it to the the enhancements. But it just still seemed weird. Especially given the fact that in the very beginning when they attacked the, the fishing boat, which was kind of karma, um, when the trainer guy found them, he used the device that deters them from that area, but then they decided to all follow him back to the enclosure. Like, this is fine. <laughs> that seemed weird to me. I don't know. It it just didn't make that much sense why they didn't just swim away 
and them make the movie about having to find them using the locator beacons and everything and them getting into bigger shenanigans and issues. Mm -hmm. But, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda with this plot line. The unsanctioned human trials are another big, big issue. I could kind of see that happening a little bit, especially in International Waters. He's the one funding everything, so maybe the the people employed by him feel like they can't really say anything against it, especially since Ice they're cream. being paid very well. <laughs> um, but what I take a bigger issue with is that he's taking this stuff orally, and they make it seem like it works like that. Like, it just, oh, suddenly my brain is enhanced for a short duration immediately after ingesting it. <laughs> no. Well, and then plus, like, the way that it implied how he used to act before taking it, it kind of sounded like it acted like steroids. Or, kind like, of. it makes you more aggressive. and A little, yeah. And part of that could have been attributed to the shark's genes. <laughs> I am slowly becoming a, a little, yeah. I mean, they're an apex predator, so that part I kind of understood. That made sense. It was cold and logical, and that made sense. But I also don't understand how he suddenly had the knowledge of certain, like, air vent shafts and, and stuff like that. Maybe if they made it a point to show that he had looked through it just in passing and just remembered that it was there, okay, fine. Like enhanced memory. But you're not suddenly going to know what the blueprints are and know exactly how everything yeah, you works. Don't, you don't that's, obtain knowledge yeah, from no. intelligence. It like, that's not how suddenly, that works. I leveled up and gained this knowledge yeah, <laughs> kind of no. thing. No. Yeah, that, that didn't make sense at all. Yet again, this is another movie that has the shark watching and listening and understanding conversations that are happening inside a facility between two humans. Yes. That's not how this works. Intelligence does not give you language. Like, you could be the absolute most intelligent person ever in one country if you're suddenly picked up and plopped into a completely random country with a different language. You're not suddenly going to understand every word of that language. Or like with dolphins. Dolphins, they I know they've said that they either are as smart as humans or even slightly smarter but, I mean, we can't communicate with dolphins and they yeah. can't communicate with us. There's a big language barrier there. They can pick out certain words after a while. But that's like a dog learning what sit means. <laughs> it's it's a process and they're not going to know the full language of what you're saying. As much as we dog owners like to think that <laughs> yeah it's like it's like word association yeah. it's like our language it's not just about word association it's not it's, it's and there's so many nuances with elements. inflections and tones and no language is complicated <laughs> it is it's a very complicated thing which is why people fight <laughs> a lot <laughs> a lot <laughs> but a shark's not going to understand what's going on and be like <gasps> He wants to kill us once this is all over. Once we've outlived our usefulness, he must die. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> uh, and then shortly after that, they call one specific shark to them, Bella, and it stays there very docile and allows them to inject it near the dorsal fin with what we assume is some kind of tranquilizer and and then they're able to maneuver it to the wave pool from a different area it was at the surface i'm not sure how they got it to the wave pool <laughs> they were very unspecific but no <laughs> it's not just going to swim casually up to you and then hold its position while you give it a little injection <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> That's not how any of that works. Then the sharks take out the cameras. We've seen this on another movie, too. It's the previous Deep Blue Sea. They take out the cameras. Yeah, and I think one of the Jaws movies. Jaws 3. I'm pretty sure they yeah. did that, too. 
the shark doesn't know what a camera is or what it's for, so it's not going to destroy it in the knowledge of they can't see what we're doing now. The only thing I have wondered is since they can sense electromagnetic fields, if if electronics give out a strong enough one that they'd be at least curious. Maybe, but the whole facility has various other pieces of technology that are likely giving off similar or greater electromagnetic yeah, fields. So why the cameras in particular? Yeah. <laughs> it makes no sense. It really doesn't. I know you're trying to make it a bit more suspenseful. You don't know what they're doing. Oh god, this is scary. But it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so no. <laughs> the CPR on the the guy that goes out to try to get to the surface was also done wrong. Oh, I didn't even notice. Oh, they were pumping way too fast on his chest. Oh yeah, because he got to stay in the lab. Mm -hmm. Stay in the lab. It was completely off tempo, slightly I think it was slightly out of the area like it's slightly over from where they should be doing it but it was hard to tell from the angle i think it's actually supposed to be like on the sternum yeah like in run in the mm -hmm. middle of your lungs yeah it's it's supposed to be like right where the heart is which is just off center from the sternum so a lot of people do the sternum just because that's the closest area but you're supposed to do it to the tempo of staying alive not Super fast, oh my god, panic pumping. <laughs> yeah. Like they were doing and then breathing in the mouth. You're actually not really supposed to breathe in. Yeah, they don't anymore. do that anymore. They didn't check his airways beforehand either to try to make sure that they were as clear as possible. They didn't tilt his head back or anything. They just started furiously beating on his chest. <laughs> I wonder how many years they've stopped doing get, uh, mouth to mouth. Yeah. Because it feels like it's been a while. Yeah. And then they didn't turn him on his side. He immediately oh, sat up and yeah. then stood up. Because it's like even when you're unconscious, if you're off to your side, that will, mm -hmm. that gives your body. It helps yeah. you expel it. So, no. <laughs> he wouldn't be jumping up immediately either. That's. That's pretty traumatic on the body. It's going to take you a minute to, to get your bearings and recover. <laughs> um, and while funny, when he gets his head literally bitten off, <laughs> no. <laughs> he wouldn't have stood up that fast for it to happen that way. <laughs> uh, then we already harped on the baby shark piranha wave. Baby And, <laughs> and the, the noises that they made. Uh, the... They were really, really inconsistent with the water levels as well. It seemed like there was a great deal of water coming into the facility. And they were fairly l deep in the ocean. Like, it's a decent-sized facility. With that amount of water, if you have to have certain pressure gauges and everything at regular intervals and, like, different doors to close off areas so that it's not compromised by pressure, certain areas should have been buckling. Yeah. And they could have used that easily, which they did in the first movie. That was part of the issue they were having, was a lot of the lower levels were buckling, so the place was sinking slowly. But it was sinking. <laughs> it was a very real problem. Because even if they made it to the surface, there is an issue... <laughs> Of you're not going to have a place to stand for long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're still not necessarily safe from the sharks. So they could have easily used that in this movie too. Instead of the baby wave. Baby but they, piranha wave. But whenever they were at the very top though. They did say that would sink in a few minutes. It would, yes. But they didn't make it a real threat while they were in the facility. That's true. You didn't it wasn't until see they anything buckling. You didn't hear any of the metal groaning or grinding or anything like that. The only big issue in the facility was the baby piranha wave. <laughs> Shark piranha wave. That was it. So it was a huge missed opportunity. And with the amount of water that was flowing in on the various shots in the facility, the water levels were changing. <laughs> Sometimes it'd be a steady, like, just under the waist level. Sometimes it'd be right at waist level. Sometimes it was, like, up to their chest. And within a few minutes, it should have been, like, 
completely submerged and they didn't really have that same consistency all throughout the different sections, which most of them were all connected. So it should have been pretty much the same in each of the sections. But they kept changing it and you didn't really get the sense that there's an issue if they don't make it up to the surface, they will not be able to breathe. They're going to drown in that facility if they don't make it out. Yeah. So it was very confusing watching it, just seeing the different water levels. Yes, I have a second page. <laughs> I had issues with this movie. Um, when they, when the three get to the area with the air shaft up to the top, the trainer dude, the billionaire dude, and the doctor lady. When the doctor lady hears one of the other survivors and goes to check to see if they're nearby so they can all go up to the surface, the billionaire dude jams the door. <laughs> yeah, that was. By taking the wheel off of it? But there's a wheel on the other side of the door. So it doesn't make sense how it's jammed exactly. I didn't think, I didn't catch that. Like, oh my goodness. The inner mechanism is still there. And the other wheel on the other side should theoretically work just fine. So I'm not an expert on those kind of doors, but it seems like a WTF kind of moment. <laughs> and a why does this not work for whatever reason? Is it just for added suspense? Because it seems kind of dumb. <laughs> like if there was a lock, an actual lock on the other side of the door and he jammed it in a way that it couldn't be undone or unlocked... That would have made more sense. But he just took the wheel off of their side. So, no. <laughs> that didn't make that much sense at all. Uh, also, can we talk about the fact that the billionaire dude has seen Terminator 1 too many times? Because he keeps mentioning, like, the the reason why he got on this research topic was because he is terrified that AI is going oh, to yes. take over, machines are going to take over the world, there is a war coming with the machines, and we have to be smarter and evolve more than the machines so we can keep them down, we can be the top species. Um, sir, Terminator is just a movie. And while it is a bit concerning sometimes how quickly AI progresses and technology progresses, I'm pretty sure we have a little ways to go before that point. Well, they're saying we're hopefully, coming up within the next 10 years, maybe. Hopefully. But, but it's like the other guy, like, I, I'm i definitely somewhere in the middle where the other guy is like, yeah, humans are, are pretty, pretty shit. So I'm like, yeah, humans are pretty shit. But I know, was it Stephen Hawking? I don't know. There, there's some like um, really well like renowned person that was like, "We're probably gonna be screwed if AI." But, but it's like you know that that's like a controversial thing. Like it's it not a hundred percent thing that and it's will not, or will not like an absolute immediate need. Yeah, <laughs> like, there and, are other options and avenues. That yeah, he do. definitely <laughs> went off the deep end. It was a little, little crazy. <laughs> Yeah. And it didn't really seem to fit that much. Like, if that's the reason why he did the research yeah, at all, it seemed pretty no. out there. Because it's like, at least in the previous movie, they had a good reason. They're yes. trying to find a treatment for Alzheimer's, which is and like various other, yeah. Yeah, which is a legitimate, like, reason for them to try and do that. Yes, and that made sense. It did. It really did. So if they had mentioned, like, some other kind of degenerative issue with the brain and that's why they were doing this kind of enhancement to combat that that would have made a bit more sense and would have probably made it a little better honestly <laughs> instead of skynet is coming yeah that was yeah once that <laughs> came up i'm like wow yeah the maimed effects were also god-awful and some of it was kind of pointless, honestly. Like, the CG for the wounds and everything. Especially when the newlywed couple, the the woman, got eaten by the baby piranha sharks. Yeah. And jumped up for that, you know, jump scare. So you could see the, the gore and everything for the added ew factor, I guess. It was just kind of... 
eh. And, like, there's no reason for her to jump up because it nope. seemed like she's already dead. Yeah, exactly. So if they had just had the blood in the water, they could have left it at that and it would have still had the same impact. Would have saved them some dollars. It would have. <laughs> it would have. Instead, they showed it and it made it so much less realistic. Uh <laughs> I'm also why or wondering why they even put the vent cover back on when they climbed up the shaft. Because they had to go back and then take off the cover for the other people to come up the shaft again. Yeah, it kind of seemed like they're trying to prevent the piranha sharks from coming up. But, but like, if the water level wasn't anyways. up... Yeah, if the water level wasn't up that far anyway yeah. in the shaft, then it isn't an issue. And even if the water did rise up to that point in the shaft, you have a different problem. Yeah. And continuing with that ladder in the shaft, why did they go up it so dang slow? I'm sorry, there are sharks trying to eat your tootsies, and you're very, very slowly and, and carefully killed. going up the ladder, and it resulted in one of their deaths. Yeah, though, to be fair, he he didn't seem very excited to live with his fiance being dead, but... But he was trying. Yeah, he was trying. And if trying. the person ahead of him would, I don't know, move his tush up the dang ladder when there are sharks trying to eat them, then maybe he might have lived and could have started a foundation in her name or something. Yeah. Yeah. So. I am surprised that so many made it out alive, though. But I guess more did make it out in the original, too. It was, it was two it was people. Three. It was originally three, but then the doctor girl sacrificed herself. I couldn't remember if she had lived or not. She dies. Oh. But it's like it's kind of like a redeeming death. Yeah. Yeah. But it is still kind of unusual for that many people to make it out. There were three. Yeah. Like, normally it's like one person, maybe two. Yeah. And it's rare when it's two, even. It's usually yeah. just the final girl. Yep. And the funny guy made it out. <laughs> that made me happy. It's unrealistic how he made it out with him being dragged under by a shoe. And the fact that it didn't puncture his foot, only his shoe. But okay. It was kind of funny when he looked it up and you just see a sock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is with my shoe. <laughs> it's like the shark's a dog where it's like, oh, I just want your shoe. Yeah. I want to chew up your shoe. It's like how Amy used to target specifically my socks. Nobody else's, just mine. I thought that was kind of cute. <laughs> but it is unrealistic, like you said. Like, he should have drowned or they he would have had to have popped up in a different area. But then why did he swim under the water instead of just, you know, swimming at the surface to the boat from yeah, that distance? It's literally just for the movie. Yeah, just for that effect. So, those are my thoughts. Oh my god. <laughs> Finally, on the realism scale, this took a lot longer. Not that y'all saw any of that. <laughs> yep. But yes, those are my thoughts. It's it's not... It's okay. It's an alright movie. It's not great. If you're... If you have the choice between this and the original, definitely go for the original. Yeah. And it's like, I don't feel like this is even a movie worth watching if you enjoy shark movies. Like, maybe if you've kind of exhausted your list and you're like, oh, I just want to watch a shark movie, then sure. It's going to be dumb. Yeah, it, it, it's one of those dumb shark movies, but not... The only funny part for me was the baby sharks, but as you said, it, it does get old after a while. Mm -hmm. But that's the only, like, redeeming quality that it had. Yeah. They had some decent, somewhat realistic facts in it. But they exaggerate it heavily, as movies often do. Yep. And there were just a lot of missed opportunities. Yep. It could have been made better. It could have. They didn't need the baby piranha sharks. They could have added the extra tension in more realistic ways. <laughs> yep. Well, thank you everyone who joined us today and let us know what you thought of the movie. If you'd like to suggest a movie, tea, or game for us to play, or you would like to keep up to date with our content, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and most places that you listen to podcasts. 
And if you'd like to support the podcast monetarily, we do have a donate button that goes to PayPal for us. It goes directly to the podcast. We also have our affiliate link for Plum Deluxe. It does not affect the price of the tea at all. It just helps out the podcast a little bit. And of course, we'll have our links for the merch, the mugs and shirts and things (laughs) down below as well. So until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye.